Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and it's Tag Tuesday. This is the BookTube at the Gym tag. Brian over at Bookish originally created this tag, and my goodness, it was dynamite. <laughs> but it was before I had a channel. By the time I discovered that this tag existed, gyms weren't really a place I could go. <laughs> but now that we have our stationary bike in the house, I thought it was time to crack this one open. So here we go. Prompt one, bench press. Gives you a chance to show off. Obviously, that's a big emphasis on my part. What book are you proud of having read? Well, Brian, at the time, this was a couple years ago, was very proud of having read the first two volumes of In Search of Lost Time by Proust. I guess I'll say that I'm proud of having read the full In Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust. Bench press that, Brian. Prompt two, leg day. Personal favorite of mine. Lots of people skip leg day. What's a book, genre, or author you skipped because you didn't think you could handle it or wished you skipped? I try not to skip anything. I certainly don't skip leg day, but I do wish that I had not read To Have and Have Not by Ernest Hemingway. That book is awful and miserable. I will add though, and this is probably deserving of a video of its own, that about five eighths of the books I've read from Don DeLillo just don't cut it. Maybe there should be a where not to start with Don DeLillo. Prompt three, crunches. We all know crunches are good for us. What's a book you read because you needed to gain a better understanding of literature, your work, history, etc.? <clears throat> so I've mentioned this before, but when I was fairly young, I want to say like eight or nine years old, I first read the autobiography of Malcolm X. It was one my dad had read when he was in like middle or up, uh, lower high school roughly like 1972-ish, and it made a big impact on him, and so it was a book he had me read when I was like eight or nine, and we talked about it as I was reading it, and it was very eye-opening. Um, currently, I'm reading Mau Mau, an African Crucible by Robert Edgerton about um, the suppression of the Mau Mau Rebellion in Kenya by the British government in the 1950s, and that has been eye-opening and deeply tragic and horrifying, and a book that challenges, you know, our, our perceptions of how, how not far we've come in a number of ways. Prompt four, the treadmill. It's all about endurance, again, a favorite of mine. What's a long or difficult work you powered through? Berenstain Bears and the Adventure of the Missing Dinosaur Bone by Stan and Jim Berenstain. That was definitely a challenging book when I was like five or six. But I was really into dinosaurs, I'll be honest. A book combining dinosaurs and detectives right up my alley, right up the alley of Jack Rambling Raconteur, age six. Um, I won't spoil it for you and tell you who stole the missing dinosaur bone, but it's a good one. Uh, more recently, a longer book, Gargantua and Pant Gruel by Rabelais, love that one. Prompt five, lat rows. This is all about feeling good about yourself. What's a book, genre, or author you read because it makes you feel good or it brings you joy? I always like reading crime fiction, uh, <laughs> poetry as well. I read those at different times. Crime fiction when I'm, I'm just so stressed out that like, I need to take my mind to a very specific place where I may be fo more focused on plot or I'm, I'm more focused on trying to figure something out because there are aspects of my own real life they can't be figured out. Um, poetry yeah, just activates all sorts of great associations and images, and I love that. Um, specific writers, writers like Virginia Woolf, Toni Morrison, they're not writing about joy necessarily, but they're writing about people who are discovering the moments of joy that can exist in, in a life that is quite difficult or, or, or that with experiences that are very difficult. Prompt six, squats, always my favorite lift in the gym because it was the one I was best at. That heavy weight can get you down. What's a book that you found depressing, but pushed through? I don't want to use the phrase push through, but um, probably the single most depressing work I read last year was Last Words from Montmartre by Chu Miao Jin. In part because it really is a series of, of almost autobiographical letters and notes and reflections she has towards the end of her own life and understanding the amount of prejudice she faced, understanding the amount of pressure she faced um, from her family, from her society, even while living as an expatriate in France. 
And that was a very, very challenging book to read, even though it was very short because the emotion was so raw and so unrelenting. And that was, and knowing it was her experience and, and how her life ended really as the book was being finished. Prompt seven, bicep curls. I should note that I spent many years trying to get stronger with my bicep curls. And it was only when I became a parent and would hold our older daughter, sometimes for hours at a time because she had so much attachment, so many attachment issues, that that was finally the point at which I increased the amount I could curl doing bicep curls. It's easy to overdo these. It's challenging though to make dinner with one arm while holding your daughter and then rotating. Great workout though. Name two authors you've read too much of. Author one, Marcus Aurelius. That's really because the nature of the meditations is that they repeat over and over and over. Anybody who tries to read them straight through, please don't. And once you've read five or 10 pages, you really get everything Marcus Aurelius is gonna have to say. He's just gonna repeat himself. And he loves to talk about himself. How nobody's up to the task. But of all the people who aren't up to the task, He's the best of them. The other would be Philip Roth. I read way too many books by Philip Roth. I didn't even enjoy three-eighths of them as I did Don DeLillo. Finally, prompt eight, tricep dips. The triceps are too often ignored. Not by the rambling raconteur. Name three authors you need to read more. I don't want to uh, give too much of a hint for some reading I'll be doing later this year. But I'll say Gabriela Cabezon Camera whose adventure of China Iron looks fantastic. Uh, Adaf Sue, whose map of love from roughly 20, 25 years ago, again, looks fantastic. And Lady Murasaki, whose tale of Genji might be uh, dropping into my lap to read across the next month. Finally, let's tag the rest of the gym rats of booktube. I'm just gonna try and grab a bunch of people who I believe started their channels after Brian debuted this phenomenal tag. So I'm gonna tag Very Literary Carrie, who recently finished a marathon. I'll tag Noah at everyone who reads it must converse. I'm gonna tag Kathy over at The Grim Reader. She had a great video uh, tearing into the beloved William Gass. I'll tag Fraser Simons at Springboard Thought, Brandon's bookshelf, Alan's Lonely Bookshelf. Alan does all these great videos on Instagram from the gym, so he could top my video for sure. Bill Rutenberg, uh, I'll tag L Thinks, and I'll tag Shelly Swearingen. Stay safe out there, book too.